Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a relaxation chamber for insects that have been dead for a while and you want to be able to loosen those muscles up to be able to move them again without having to worry about breaking them. So I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So right now, let me grab the piece here. I have just dampened and rang out two cellulose sponges. These are ones that I've had in here for years that have just dried out because I haven't used this for a while. And you can literally use ones that are brand new or ones that have dried out. I will say I washed my hands pretty good after wringing these ones out because I have used these quite a bit. And you put mothballs down in here to keep mold from growing on the specimens. So these have absorbed mothballs in the past. So you want to make sure if you're using used ones to wash your hands afterwards. Anyway, though... This is just a Blue Bunny family size ice cream pail, that big. Um, you can use any other airtight container. It doesn't have to be ice cream pail, but I liked it because I had a handle so I could carry it easily. So what you're going to need for doing this is you're going to need some mothballs. I personally just get the mothball packets instead of the loose crystals because they're so much easier. All you have to do is literally just tear the packet open. It has two mothball discs in it. And you just pop them in here versus the crystals. They get stuck together. You have to loosen them up with a tool of some sort. Sprinkle them in. I just like the little discs. They're so much more convenient. Also, I can choose the scent, which lavender I would rather smell than plain mothballs. You're going to need blotter paper, which you can get probably most likely on Amazon. I have never seen blotter paper in like Walmart, for instance, or Target. I mean, in the craft aisle, maybe they carry something like this now, but pretty much the main use of blotter paper for crafting is normally for preserving leaves for, like, collections and stuff like that. I'm sure that there's other uses for it, but what blotter paper does, and it makes it different than regular paper, so anyway, the blotter paper absorbs the moisture and it does not let it drip back down onto the insects, and then the, uh... Mothballs, like I just mentioned, I think earlier, keeps mold from growing on the bugs because, you know, there will be humidity in here. But the humidity is what you want to uh, loosen up the muscles of the bugs. So another thing, I like to use cotton rounds, which you can see I've just got some here from Walmart. This is what they look like. They're not that expensive. I think I got this in part of like a three pack. And you want to make about an inch to two inches of just cotton covering the cellulose sponges. You don't got to go over the sides because you don't want it to sink down into the side and the bug fall down in there. So I'll kind of give you an idea of my stack pattern that I do, which I got more because I don't know why I only had a thin layer that I used last time. Because I noticed that these cotton balls I'm putting, or cotton pads I'm putting back in here, were the only ones I had from when I last used this. And I like to have a little bit more height to it than just this. Because you can see that just barely does anything. Why did the color change? That's weird. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to pause this, get some more out, and then I'm going to add that in. Okay, so I have a few more. And I just noticed these ones, because they're cheaper than these ones, these ones are nice and fluffy, as you can see. And these ones are all thin, so... I'm just going to kind of build up. I'm want, I'm going to put a couple down here just to cover that sponge. I do not want the bugs to touch any of that moisture. So that should be okay as long as I've got all of that blocked off. Next, we're going to take some insects that I purchased online, which I have here in this box. So these are what I'm talking about with insects that you can't easily spread the wings of anymore. So as you can see, the wings are folded up. Normally with a dry specimen like this, the wings are going to be brittle. They're stuck in this formation. Like the only time that you can pin a butterfly um, when it has sat like this is when it's freshly caught. So within the first, I want to say four days of you catching it, you're going to be able to pin it easily. If you wait any longer than that, the muscles start to set in place. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, and along with some of the others I purchased, and I'm going to lay them in here and just kind of give you an idea of how full you should fill this. You don't want to fill it too full, obviously, but real quick, before I forget, I'm going to add those mothballs because I almost forgot that uh, those need to go in before these specimens do. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a packet. I just tore it open. As you can see, it's got two discs in here. 
for the moth crystal balls. And I'm just going to pop them down here in the corner. I think two should be plenty for this container. I don't think I'm going to need any more, which I'm going to go ahead and put that lid back on. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one open along with a few others. And I will say real quick, the larger the insect, the longer it's going to have to be in here. So for instance, this one will probably have to be in here for about four to five days. I feel like four days it should be okay, but we'll see. Um, four to five days is a pretty good guess. So for some of the others in here, like this one here, it's not as big, but this one would still probably be three to four. And then we've got a smaller one, or a couple smaller ones, I should say. These are both white peacock butterflies of just a small difference of color. I'll try to flip these around so you can see them a little bit better. As you can see, this one's a little bit more orange. This one's darker. The guy actually let me pick, and I told him I wanted a couple that were different color. You really can't tell the genders apart with these because both the male and female look the same, so I just went ahead and just chose two random ones that uh, had different coloration. We've got this guy here, and this one, again, will probably take three to four days. These ones here, I will say two to three. Um, let's see, I don't know if I've got any actually smaller ones. We've got this one here that's pretty good size. It'll probably take the, you know, four to five days. We've got this little tiny one, which you'll see when I take it out. This one probably only will take a couple days, and then this one here... Looks like it's probably medium size. I don't remember all the things I purchased, but that was all that was in there. If you look up, like, I think it's JT's Creations or Insect Creations or something like that on Facebook, he has really good auctions and sales for cheap. I got all of these butterflies. I want to guesstimate for around after shipping $45. I think shipping 6 bucks. And that's pretty cheap for this much variety. I think these were only like three or so dollars a piece. And those were a set price. Those he had a bunch of, so I just flat out bought them. The rest of these I won in an auction. And I didn't pay that much for them compared to if I would have gone to an insect website and had to pay, you know, like $19 shipping or something because it's outrageous. But anyway, enough blabbing. I'm going to go ahead and get these guys cut open. Now, I was just going to show you guys real quick. This is not really that big of a deal. For anyone who's been collecting for a while, this is not that big of a deal, honestly. But you can see here, a part of the abdomen has broken off in transit. This just kind of gives you an idea of how brittle these are. Um, some of them have been dead for a while. So this one here, I'm going to save the abdomen. It's not going to be in here. It's going to be separate. And once it's done and pinned, I will actually make a little video if there's interest, showing you guys how that gets glued back on. Pretty much, when you collect insects for a long time, you become kind of an insect surgeon, or, you know, you're gluing body parts back together that fell off. Um, so, this one doesn't have, does not appear to have any antenna, so that's a little disappointing, because I see the others do, unless they also broke off somewhere. I don't know, I'll have to see. I do see something up here in the corner, but I don't know if that's just marker or what that is. So we'll find out, but I figured I'd kind of add that in real quick because I cut this open and discovered it was broken. But like I said, that's okay because it can be glued back on. <laughs> okay, guys, so I'll show you each one as I open it. This one looks fine. Antennas are there. I got the other one placed in here, and I didn't see any antennas. I will say the thing I saw in the bag is part of the uh, tail because it's a swallowtail butterfly, so that also can be glued back on. That's going to be a little bit more difficult, but I've done it before with a few of my other butterflies when I've had that happen. Whenever you put them in the kill jar, that uh, can happen sometimes because they're flying around and beating their wings and stuff. So with butterflies like this, it actually is a lot easier to put them in the freezer because you've got them in a Ziploc bag. Normally, if you can push some of the air out, that gives them less room to move around and they'll die in place like this versus flapping around and possibly having their wings folded outwards. So outwards is when, instead of the wings being folded all nice like this, they're folded where the wings are going downwards. The body's still like this, going downwards, so then when you go to pin it, you've got to pull those wings back up into place instead of folding them out. And it's a huge pain in the butt, because it's really easy to break stuff when uh, you have to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and place this guy in here, and then I'll get some more open. Okay guys, so here are all the butterflies out of their containers, except these two are in paper towel, but I just wanted to show you, just to give you an idea, he did include in a couple of them, whoop, the collection dates, and 
This one here was collected in 64, 1964. And then this one over here was collected in 2012. So you can see that some of these are quite old. I do have one other one that I'm aware of that was collected in 69, I believe, and that was one of my Atlas moths. So I'll kind of show you guys some of the butterflies. Now obviously you'll get to see them when I go to pin them because they look a lot different on the inside. But here's what this one looks like on the outside. Go ahead and place this one in here. And you want to try when you're placing them to not let them touch. This one here is really pretty. This one is actually a type that uh, I've seen before in person alive at one of my botanical gardens that I went to one time. Lay that one in there. The other peacock can go next to the one that we've already placed in there. You can swoop. Very gently pick that up. There we go. There we go. And you can see there is a slight color differentiation. The one on the left is a little bit more colorful. And if you have any legs or anything that fall off on like the cotton and stuff, that's no big deal. Now I do see a tip of an antenna right there. I don't think I'm too concerned about trying to glue that back on. If it was the entire antenna, then sure, but I'm not really too concerned about just the tip of the antenna. And we've got this one here. It's really pretty. I'm curious to see what that one looks like on the inside now. I'm going to do some, whoop, sorry guys, some reorganizing real quick so that this one can fit. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one and put it there. I'm actually going to turn the body of that one like that. And then this one should be able to fit. And if not, I do see it's kind of touching one of the others. Woo! Broke some of the legs off. No big deal. <laughs> I'm not really too concerned about legs. I'm going to put this one over here. And let's see what these two little ones look like. I'm going to have to use both hands. I'll be back. Okay, so I forgot how pretty these ones are. So this one is actually a little yellow one. And I'm pretty sure, whoop, <laughs> that uh, these two labels were the ones that had the little butterflies in them. Okay. Um, I'm going to reorganize something again real quick. Okay, so I got that one in there. I've moved that one over again <laughs> so that I can fit this one. But this one is super cool. It's got some uh, iridescent uh, spotting on it, kind of like our Spangled Fritillary that we have and the Regal Fritillary, which are both uh, butterflies you can find in the U.S. I'm sure there's other states you can find them in than just Kansas. They're not super rare or anything. But uh, they also have the shiny stuff on them like that. So we're going to go ahead and place this one right here. I'm sure some people will handle these with tweezers. I'm not really too concerned. I don't have anything I've gotten on my fingers. I'm pretty used to handling these very gently um, just from doing this for a long time. But some people are professional and they want to handle them with tweezers. You go right ahead. So this isn't going to cover the entire top because this is a very wide container. It does have this little space right here. But as you can see, I can actually move this because I'm going to make it to where that space just goes down into a little hole so that if there is any water that collects on the lid itself, which is this, then it will not drip down onto the bugs. So just kind of keep that in mind. Then we just place this on here real good and tight like that. And it's done. Now you just got to wait. <laughs> Pretty simple. Um, preferably you want to keep it in a room that's kind of warm, not super cold, because obviously you want there to be humidity and stuff. So again, if you guys are interested, like I said, the, uh, I'll actually just put the link to his, like, page on Facebook in the comments and in the description, just so you guys have an idea. If you're interested in buying from him, I don't know if he ships outside of the United States. You'd have to look. <laughs> I think he might. I don't know what the shipping rate would be, but I live obviously in Kansas, so I only paid $6 in shipping. But uh, yeah, it's pretty fun getting to see all the different variety of stuff he has on there every so often. Um, I was hoping to fit a moth that I had caught in there, because I well, not caught, but I found this sphinx moth at work that was dead on the floor. 
I was hoping to be able to fit that in there. I don't think that there's room, so it's just going to have to wait. And then I had this uh, owl fly that I found at work as well that was dead. So co-workers bring me stuff that they find, ask me what it is, and then, you know, I take it home. So, <laughs> but anyway, guys, hopefully you found this video informative on how to assemble your very own uh, relaxation chamber without spending a whole bunch. Um, so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a good rest of your day.